In this video, we will be discussing the solution to the perfect power devices problem from Code Chef April Long Challenge 2020. In this problem, f of m is the sum of all perfect powers which divide m. So say m is equal to 36. So the factors of 36 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18 and 36. Out of these factors, 1 is a perfect power because we can write 1 as 1 square or 1 cube and then 4 is a perfect power since we can write 4 as 2 square. Similarly, 9 is a perfect power since we can write it as 3 square and 36 is a perfect power since we can write 36 as 6 square. Note that these powers just need not be squares, they can be cubes, so it can be 6 cubes, 6 power for anything. So f of 36 will be the sum of such factors. So it will be 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 36. And we are supposed to find f of 1 plus f of 2 until f of n, where the maximum value of n is 10 power 18. So now let's see how we can solve this problem. Let me consider a perfect power k. So k will be equal to some x power y where y is greater than 1. Now I need to find the contribution of k to this entire sum from f of 1 to f of n. Say k is equal to 9 which is 3 square. How much will 9 contribute to the sum? The terms to which 9 will contribute is f of 9, f of 18, f of 27 and so on. Because all multiples of 9 will have 9 as its factor. Any other number which is not a multiple of 9 will not have 9 as its factor. So I will be adding 9 once over here. Then I will be adding 9 once over here. Then I will be adding 9 once over here and so on. Each multiple of 9 will have 9 as one of its factor. And since 9 is a perfect power, I will add 9 to every f of the number which is multiple of 9. And how many multiples of 9 are there which is less than n? It will be n divided by 9 and if I take the floor of it, I will get the number of multiples of 9 which are less than or equal to n. So if I take n is equal to 30, then I have only 3 multiples of 9 and my total contribution by 9 will be this 3 into 9. Basically the contribution by my perfect power k will be k into the number of multiples that k has which is less than or equal to n. Now that we know how much is the contribution of every perfect power, let's see how we can generate these perfect powers and calculate a final answer. Let's have k to this number shown over here. I have prime factorized k as shown over here and this number is a perfect power. Since it is a perfect power, I want to find the smallest base to this number. k is equal to say some x power y. I want to find the smallest possible value of x. To do that, what I will do is I will take out the GCD of all the prime powers. So I will find the GCD of 3, 6, 9 and 3, which will be equal to 3 and that will be the value of my y. So I will be left over with 2 into 3 square into 5 cube into 7 the whole cube. Now the base boils down to 3, 2 into 3 square 5 cube into 7. The GCD of all the powers in this prime numbers is now 1. So I cannot reduce the base further. This is the smallest base possible. And if you notice this base is not a perfect power. Now can I find a different base of k such that that different base is also not a perfect power? No, I cannot. Because if there were say a different base, so I can write a power b where a is also not a perfect power and I am saying that a is not equal to x. So in the prime factorization of a, the GCD of all the powers must be 1. And there is only one way to take out this number from the powers of all these prime factors such that the remaining powers are having GCD of 1. 
So essentially, any perfect power k will have one and only one base x such that x is not a perfect power. When x is not a perfect power, that means the powers of its primes have GCD1 because there is only one way that after I take out the common power out of all these powers, I remain with GCD1. So any perfect number can have only one non-perfect power as its base. With this, we can now start discussing how we can generate this perfect power in order to calculate our answer. For base 1, we will just increment answer by n since 1 contributes n to the answer. From base 2 onwards, we will calculate all its powers. So I'll calculate 2 square, 2 cube, 2 power 4 and so on. And for each of these powers, I will increment my answer with this formula. Then I will take my next base which is 3 and calculate its powers. 3 square, 3 cube and so on and find my answer for every power. And then I will go to my next base 4. Now I will calculate all the powers of 4. But if you notice, 4 square is already repeated in the power of 2. 4 cube will also be repeated in the power of 2. So I only need to choose those bases which will not calculate redundant powers. Since we know that every perfect power can have exactly one base which is not a perfect power, I will use only those bases which are not a perfect power to generate the powers for calculating the answer. In this case, 2 is not a perfect power, 3 is not a perfect power, 4 is a perfect power, 5 is not a perfect power, so I will calculate its powers, 6 is not a perfect power, so I will use 6 to calculate, 7 is also not a perfect power, 8 is a perfect power, this is 2 cube, so I will not use 8 to generate, 9 is a perfect power, so I will not use 9 to generate powers, and so on. How do we ensure that we cover all the perfect powers? Well, every perfect power will have exactly one non-perfect base. So say for example, my perfect power k is equal to 49. Now, there is only one base for k which is not a perfect power and that is 7. I can write 49 as 7 square and this 7 is not a perfect power. And so, if I use non-perfect bases to generate their powers, I will be basically covering all the perfect powers I need in order to calculate the answer. So what I will do is, whenever I generate these powers, say 2 square, 2 cube, 2 power 4, and let us call that perfect power as k, I will have an array called taken, and I will set taken of k to be equal to true. So I will set taken of 2 square, taken of 2 cube, taken of 3 square, 3 cube all to be true. So when I reach a base say 7, I will check the value of taken of 7. If taken of 7 was true, that means I have already encountered 7 as a perfect power before and so I will not take 7 as a base. However, taken of 7 will be false because we have not encountered 7 anywhere before and because taken of 7 is false, we know that 7 is a non-perfect power. So I can use 7 as a base to generate the powers. So whenever taken of k is equal to false, I can use that k as a base to generate powers. With that said, we now know how to generate the perfect powers exactly once and add them to the answer. Now, how many perfect powers can a base have? So if I consider 2, until how many power will I have to iterate until I reach n? And since n is up to 10 power 18, the maximum power I can go up to is around 2 power 60, which is around 10 power 18. So for every number, there is a maximum of only 60 powers which needs to be generated. And while iterating over the bases, what is the highest base we need to iterate up to? It would be root n because the first perfect power of root n is the square of it. So the square of root n will give me n. And so my base will be limited up to root n. 
So the complexity boils down to 60 into rho 10. And since n is in the order of 10 power 18, this would be very slow. So how, how can we optimize this further? What I will be doing is, I will be calculating the answer separately for odd powers, perfect powers and even powers, perfect powers. So first, I will consider all the perfect powers where those perfect powers have the power as an odd number to the base which is not a perfect power. So for example, for 1, I will just add the answer as usual and for 2, I will generate all the odd powers. So 2 cube, 2 power 5, 2 power 7 and so on. For 3, I will generate all the odd powers. And I will do this so that I now have the answer for all the perfect powers which are having the power term as odd number. The complexity for this will be 60 into cube root of n because the first perfect power which is odd is a cube and obviously a base greater than cube root of n. If I cube it, it will be greater than n. So my complexity is now capped to 60 cube root of n. If I calculate the odd power terms separately, we now have to calculate the power for even powers or just to say perfect squares because every even power number can be written as a square of some other number. For example, 81 is 3 power 4. However, it is also 9 square. So, how do I generate all the even powered numbers from 2 to n? I will start off with 2. So, I will take 2 square, then I will take 3 square, 4 square, 5 square until root n the whole square. And because any even powered number can be represented as a square of some other number, this entire range will generate all even powered numbers less than or equal to n. Now I need to calculate the answer for all these powers efficiently. At first sight, it seems as though the complexity for this is root n. Since I am calculating the answer for the squares of bases which runs from 2 to root n. But we can actually find the answer for this entire thing in the complexity of just cube root 10. And let's see how we can do that. My answer for even powers will be summation of i running from 2 to square root of n. And the contribution by every base will be n by i square into i square. So I am taking the squares of my bases from 2 to root 10 and substituting in this formula. This expression will now give me the answer for all the numbers which are having even powers. We are taking the floor of n by i square. So there will be multiple i values which will have the same floor value. Not every i value will have a different floor value. So say my n by i square is say some value t. Then there will be multiple i values which will have this floor value is t. So I can club those particular i values and calculate the sum of, over them in O of 1. Say for some i equal to the range L plus 1 to R. The value of n by i square floor will be same. Then I will increment my answer by n by R square into r into r plus 1 2r plus 1 by 6 minus l into l plus 1 and then 2l plus 1 by 6. This formula is to find the sum of squares up till the term r and by subtracting these I have found the submission i square and as this term is equal for the range l plus 1 to r I have taken that floor value outside. Basically, we are just grouping the i values which are having the same floor value. After I find the answer for this range, I just set my next i to be equal to l. So previously i was equal to r. I found the range to be l plus 1 to r and now my i will be equal to l. So I have to find a new range which has some lower value and the upper bound is l. 
we need to find this lower bound for which the floor will be equal and then again find the summation over this range and then change i back to one lower than this lower bound value. If i is currently at r, we can find the lower bound l plus 1 by using this formula. So say count is equal to n by r square and the floor of it. Then my l will be equal to the square root of n plus this count plus 1. So in the next iteration I can just set my i to be equal to l. Now the complexity for this will be cube root of n and I need to prove why will the complexity be cube root. We are finding this summation from 2 to root 10 and this we can break down to two summations where i is running from 2 to cube root of n and then in the second submission i is running to cube root of n plus 1 to n. So basically I have just broken down the ranges of i into 2. The complexity of the summation will depend on the number of distinct values of this floor of n by i square since we are clubbing all the i's together for a particular floor value. So it's easy to see the complexity for the left summation to be cube root of n because i even runs only till cube root of n. So the number of distinct values of n by i square will not be greater than that. Now let's see the number of distinct values for this floor in this summation. So when i is maximum which is root 10 this floor value will be minimum. So the smallest value of n by i square will be 1 since if we substitute i with root 10 we will get this floor value as 1 and the maximum value that this floor can have is when i is minimum. So the maximum value is n by cube root of n plus 1 whole square. So this we can round off to n by cube root of n the whole square and this will be close to cube root of n. So the maximum value that that floor can have is cube root of n. So as you can see this floor value can have only cube root n distinct values. So the complexity of this is also cube root of n. And so now we have found the answer for even powered perfect powers in order of cube root of n. I hope you've understood how this works. If you have, please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel Fluent Algorithms. See you in my next video.